Are you sick and tired of watching your electric bill go up year after year? Maybe you've even had a few quotes from solar installation companies and realized that they charge three to four dollars per watt for installation. Well, if you're like me, that simply is not an acceptable solution. In this video, you will learn how to install your own solar for less than one dollar per watt. In a previous video, I installed this six kilowatt system on my detached garage, and that was also less than one dollar per watt. I recently installed this three kilowatt system. Let me break down the costs. First off, had permits, which came in at $658, which was a little steep, but 200 of that included a letter from an engineer. Purchased eight solar panels on clearance from A1 Solar Supply, that came in at $960. And I bought four of these dual microinverters, so each one can support two solar panels. These were $200 each from Signature Solar, which is also a great place to buy solar panels. The racks and rails and mounts that came in at $529. The electrical, including conduit, feeder cables, trunk cables, a breaker, $401. And of course, the display for 225 also purchased from Signature Solar. And this display allows you to use your cell phone or the internet to view the status of your panels. That brings the total cost to around $3,600. But wait, we have our tax credit 30% from the federal government, which drops the price down to about $2,400. And for a 3,000 watt system, that works out to be around 70 cents per watt, which is a pretty good deal. So just a quick disclaimer before we get started, I am not an electrician nor a solar installer, and this video is for entertainment purposes only. If you're not experienced with electrical installation, then you should definitely get the help of a professional before taking on a project like this one. I'm simply a guy who likes to save money by learning how to do things on his own. First thing to do is map out the corners of where the solar panels will go. I used some sidewalk chalk for this. And the next thing I did was mark with chalk where the rails will mount. So finding the starting position for the first roof mount is the trickiest because we have to find the rafter underneath. We want to make sure that we're screwing this big lag screw into wood and not just through the OSB that's on top. And to do that, I use a hammer. Hear how that's just a little different pitch right there? That's where the stud will be. So using my mount as a guide, I will pre-drill a hole. And bringing up all that wood is a good sign that we hit our rafter. Next, uh, I want to use a little bit of roofing flashing cement, make a horseshoe around the hole, and then also put a little bit down the hole. Now before I did this, I pried up very gently the shingle above using this pry bar so we could insert some flashing. Now finding that hole again. And we simply drive it home. All right, now that we have this one, we can just measure either 16 on center or 24 on center, depending on your roof type, to find the next rows. Really, once you've done a few, it goes pretty quick. And my battery's dead. I'm using five mounts per rail, and you'll notice here that I've staggered them so that the load is distributed over different rafters. 
Now each mount gets one of these self-locking fasteners. You can pre-install them in the mount and then they will cam over when you tighten them down on the rail. These micro inverters are really easy to install. They mount just to the top of the rails. Of course, here are the inputs for the two solar panels. And then these micro inverters daisy chain together using this trunk cable. Now, due to my layout, these micro inverters are going to be pretty close to each other. However, these trunk cables, as you can see, are very long in between the connection points. That's okay, there's a way that we can shorten those to whatever length we want. There's a special tool you can get to open these up. Just stick them on the back here and push pretty hard. Okay, and that opens them up so that you can get to the wires, disconnect them, shorten them to whatever length you need. Also for your end piece, they make this little plug. So here are the four micro inverters that are now daisy chained using a much shorter trunk cable. And that cable leads up here and joins to the conduit that goes over to the breaker. Each micro inverter has its own unique serial number and it has extra stickers with those serial numbers. So you wanna collect those in the order that they are laid out on your roof and we'll use these later on in the video. Of course, what electrical project wouldn't be complete without digging at least 20 or 30 feet worth of trench for conduit? This is PVC conduit, so I've got it buried 18 inches and comes straight up out of the ground into the bottom of the panel. Now before I bring the solar panels up onto the roof, I wanted to show you the mounts that I'm going to be using with these Iron Ridge rails. This here is a mid clamp that goes in between two panels, drops and locks in place just like that. And this is pretty cool. This is a hidden edge clamp. So the solar panel will lay on the track and it will have the lip of the solar panel here. And then this slides over and cams over and locks it down so that you have a nice clean edge on this side. Now some of you might be asking yourself, why is this guy not getting anyone to help him put these on his roof? What kind of DIY video would it be if I had someone helping me? No, in all reality though, these things are very heavy and it would probably be a much better idea to phone a friend, get a buddy to help you get these in the right place.
And now we can plug the solar panels into the microinverter. And then use some zip ties to make sure that none of the cables are laying on the roof. Now I will admit these end clamps are a little bit tricky, but I think they're worth it just to have that cleaner looking edge. And the rain's picking up, so it looks like we're gonna finish tomorrow. All right, so the good news is it stopped raining and it's sunny. The strange news is that it's snowing. Now these rails are about nine inches longer than I need them to be, and if there was ever a time to measure twice and cut once, this would be it. So if we cut these off too small, we're gonna be in big trouble. So make sure you check your measurements and then uh, give it a cut. All right, I'm on the last panel, which is a good thing because the wind is starting to pick up. And I am running out of space on this roof. These end pieces are a bit of a trick. There we go. One more. Then we can get off this roof. The good news is that since they're so hard to put on, they're gonna be pretty strong. And there we go, that's it. As you can see, it's really not that tricky to install solar on your roof. This is the NEP BDG 256 monitor and gateway. You can kind of think of it as the central brain for all of the microinverters. I plugged mine into an outlet in my utility room and mounted it on the wall. This gateway is used to monitor the status of all of your inverters. So here on this screen, we input all of the serial numbers. Now remember there are two serial numbers per inverter because it's really two inverters bundled into one case. So now that this has been running a few days, we have a little bit of data we can look at. We can look at today, or we can look at the whole week, the whole month, or lifetime. Now with that module connected to the internet, you can install the NEP Viewer app for your iPhone or Android. And this is great because it can tell you how the panels are doing at any given time throughout the day. You can check on them while you're at work or whenever. You can even go back uh, to previous days. So here's yesterday, for example. We looks like we peaked around, uh, oh, let's see here, 2,700 watts or so, which is pretty good for this system. You can definitely tell where the clouds started to disappear around 11 o'clock yesterday. Now, if you create a profile with NEP, you can also view your panel production from their website. Here you can see I'm making about 2200 watts, which is pretty good for this 3000 watt system. And uh, you can see the monthly and daily and minute by minute production. 
You can also click here on Layout View, and you can arrange your panels the same way you have them on your roof, and then click on individual panels to see how they're doing. So for example, this one's making 294 watts right now. This one 293, 292 and a half, 293. That way you can check on your panels to see if there's anything going on with them or the inverters to know specifically where to address any problems. Now, once you pass your inspections, you'll get one of these bi-directional meters. And to pass your inspection, you need to make sure that you have all the stickers required by your power company. That seems to be what they care about the most. Now, as far as plans and permits, this is what my city and power company required from me. First of all, they wanted a basic layout of where the new panels would be, and I also included where my existing panels were. I also want to know the size of those systems because there is a limit on how much they will allow at a residential site. They also wanted a one-line schematic that shows all the panels, inverters, equipment, and how it ties into the main service panel and therefore the grid. They wanted to know the layout of the panels as well, especially the mounting, which rails were using, and how often they were spaced, because the city did have a requirement for the total amount of weight that each mount attached to your roof could carry. And of course, you have your local snow loads and wind loads that need to be taken into account when you select your rails and mounts. They also wanted to know how the roof would be flashed. Of course, they also wanted to see the data sheets for the solar panels, inverters, and mounts. I would definitely recommend getting your plans approved before you buy all of this equipment, as the power companies are getting a little bit picky about what they want to see. If you have a decent understanding of residential electricity, are willing to read your power company and municipality's local requirements, maybe watch a few YouTube videos, then yes, you have a high likelihood of being successful in installing your own solar system and saving a ton of money.